Kirk Session Records on Scotland's People. This talk will give you a brief introduction to Kirk Session Records on the National Records of Scotland's or NRS online service, Scotland's People. What are the new records? Why are they important? What will they tell you? And how can you access and use them for your research? But first, a brief introduction to NRS. Who are we? Where are we? And what do we do and hold? NRS was established on the 1st of April 2011, following the merger of the National Archives of Scotland and the General Register Office for Scotland. We have a duty to collect, preserve and produce information about Scotland's people and history and make it available to inform current and future generations. NRS holds around 80 kilometres or 49.7 miles of records which are stored in secure and temperature controlled rooms in four buildings in Edinburgh. The records span from the 12th to the 21st centuries, touching on virtually every aspect of Scottish life. We are responsible for the public and legal records of Scotland, but we also have many local and private archives. They relate to a variety of subjects, including the church, law, government and everyday life. We hold and make available one of the most varied archive collections of records in Britain. We will now turn our attention to church court records. In partnership with several local authority and university archives in Scotland, NRS look after the records of the Church of Scotland and several other Presbyterian denominations. A new system was introduced to run church affairs, education and poor relief following the Scottish Reformation in 1560, the General Assembly, Synods, Presbyteries and Kirk Sessions. A Kirk Session is the lowest court in the Church of Scotland, comprising the minister and elders of an individual parish or congregation. In the course of Kirk Session business, these courts, and in particular the elder appointed to the office of session clerk, produce records documenting their meetings, decisions and transactions. The differences in extent and jurisdiction between these courts are explained in the Church Courts Records Guide on Scotland's People. Church court records comprise a major source of information for researching many aspects of Scottish history from the mid-16th century onwards. The records created by church courts are very useful for family history, local history and academic research. They contain details of key events and communities across Scotland, mostly in the form of evidence in church court cases, offering a vivid snapshot into the everyday lives of ordinary Scots. In this period, cases could involve paternity of children and irregular marriages, and the church also carried out many functions later taken over by local government. These included school education and poor relief, registering births, deaths and marriages, and disciplining parishioners for what would now be termed antisocial behaviour, such as drunkenness, cursing or breaking the Sabbath. The records also show that in an age of private health care, the ministers and sessions sometimes paid medical bills for the poor. There are also accounts of exceptional events such as witchcraft trials, outbreaks of epidemics, crop failures, extreme weather events and the civil wars. Social historians use church court records to study everyday life in Scotland from the 16th century onwards, since the records contain information about the church's control of economic activity, moral and sexual behaviour. The church also had important functions in school education and poor relief. For family historians, these records are often the first step away from sources, such as registers of births and census returns, which are not indexed intensively by personal names. The records can give details of births, marriages, burials and the movement of people from one part of Scotland to another. 
evidence given in Kirk's session and presbytery cases can give fascinating details of how our ancestors lived, worked and worshipped. If you're lucky, the Kirk session records could be a valuable aid to help add foliage to your family tree. If you've reached a dead end in your research, the Kirk session records may contain helpful details to find out more about your ancestors. You might find evidence of them, for example, if your ancestor required financial support from the church, if they were admonished for what the church then saw as antisocial behaviour, or information relating to baptisms, marriages and burials not included in the old parish registers, or OPRs, as well as communion rolls and other lists of names. Unlike statutory registers and OPRs, Kirk session records are unindexed. To trace mentions of your ancestors, you first need to know which parish they belong to and then find out whether its records have survived. So how do you access these records? The records are free to view via the Scotland's People website, the official Scottish Government resource where you can access digital images of statutory registers of births, deaths and marriages post-1855, the census, old parish registers pre-1855, legal records and more. Click on the featured block on the Scotland's People homepage, New, search for Kirk Session and other church court records, which will take you straight to the Virtual Volumes search page. In Virtual Volumes, you can view digital copies of historical records in the care of NRS that are not indexed by personal name. There are more than a million pages from around 6,000 volumes from the courts of the Church of Scotland. The records are mainly those of Kirk sessions, presbyteries and synods between 1559 and 1900. The new record sect is digitised and unindexed, presented as individual volumes for users to browse. Registered users may search the records and then browse through the images on the site at no charge. If you wish to save or download a copy, each image costs two credits, so 50 pence. Virtual Volumes gives you three different options to search the records by volume, record creator or place. If you know where your ancestor lived, you can use Place Search to look for records relating to a civil parish, county, city, borough, island or legal jurisdiction. Examples of valid searches are Aberdeen, Kilmarnock and Lanark County. For this example, we have chosen Glasgow. You can filter your results by different types of places on the results page. You can also browse a list of places that are included in the Place Search Gazetteer. On the results page, select the place of interest, for example, Glasgow City. On the results page for Glasgow City, then select the records of interest, for example, Glasgow Cathcart Kirk Session. On the results page for Glasgow Cathcart Kirk Session, then select the records you would like to view. For example, the minutes for 1701 to 1751. If you know where a particular ancestor lived, you can also check whether they appear in the Kirk Session records by searching for records created by a specific court or body. For example, Air Kirk Session, you can also browse an alphabetical list of the different record creators. If you want to know which Kirk Sessions produce records for a parish, but do not know the name of the specific Kirk Session, it is better to search for the name of the parish using the place search. 
If you know where your ancestor lived and when they lived there, you can use the volume search to look for any available records on Scotland's people within a date range. If you know the reference number of the volume, for example, from the NRS online catalogue, you can use the volume search to look for that specific reference, for example, CH2 forward slash 384 forward slash 1. If the records appear in the NRS online catalogue but they're not currently available on Scotland's people, you can contact us to find out if they can be added to the website. The virtual volumes image viewer is different from the image viewer for index records on the Scotland's People site, in that you can view images free of charge within the image viewer, and then, if you decide you want a copy for personal research, you can purchase and download this, as long as you have first purchased credits in the normal way. The contents list on the right hand side of the image viewer is a rough list of contents in the volume, similar to chapter marks. This allows you to jump into a volume at a relevant point. Within the image viewer, there are a number of functions to help you navigate your way through the volume and to manipulate the image within the viewer. When you decide to save a copy of an image for personal research, you can use the purchase button to buy a copy of the image which will be saved to the saved volumes area of your account and also download a high quality JPEG of the image to your own device. Further guidance about how to use virtual volumes, what records are available and copyright can be found in the guide using virtual volumes. How can you use the Kirk Session records for your research? Of most interest for genealogists and local historians are the minutes of the Kirk Sessions, which typically contain a detailed and often colourful record of the discipline the minister and Kirk elders handed out to errant parishioners for offences such as drunkenness, swearing, breaking the Sabbath, quarrelling and sexual misdemeanours. This is an example of a discipline case brought before Lanark Kirk Session in December 1724. James Weir and Helen Hasty, both single persons, were found together under cloud of night in an outer coal house in a minister's clothes, and it was suspected they have been guilty of unsuitable behaviour with each other. William Robb was also suspected to be concerned in that wickedness. All three were summoned before the Kirk session to account for their unsuitable behaviour. James and Helen claimed that they were wrestling for an apple in the coal house, and William said that he was waiting outside for James to come out. They were solemnly rebuked by the session for their uncircumspect behaviour and were dismissed with a grave admonition leaving room for further process, if anything shall be discovered by the providence of God and their absolution from this scandal was delayed till they see where anything be discovered in providence or not. Additional records of interest include communion rolls and other lists of names. Communion rolls vary in the amount of detail they supply, but the most detailed give the communicant's place of residence, occupation, date of admission to the congregation and where he or she had come from. The general remarks column can provide further useful information. In addition to communion rolls and registers of baptisms, marriages and burials, Kirk Sessions habitually produced other lists of parishioners, such as male heads of household, rolls of adherence or parish population surveys. This example from Kill and Kirk Session Minutes is a role of male heads of families in 1835 who are members of the congregation and in full communion with the church. 
It is useful to researchers as an early list of names before the 1841 census. The Kirk Sessions may also provide information about the inhabitants of the parish. For example, the Kirk Session Minutes for Dallas Murrayshire includes a list of the population of the parish from June 1811. The Kirk Session was the primary body that provided poor relief to members of the parish. It also sought to determine who the fathers of children born outside marriage were, in order to confirm whether the parish was financially responsible for supporting the mother and child, if the father could not be identified. Anne Boyd, a domestic servant, had a daughter Jemima who was born on the 20th of August 1856, but was not registered until the following year. Her father's name is not given in the birth entry. Anne appeared before Creefkirk Session, as that was where her daughter was born. It states that Anne Boyd named Peter Kemp as the father of her child. She also appeared before the Kirk Session in Madity, where she resided when the guilt was contracted. Peter refused the charge against him. It was recorded in the Creef Minutes on the 8th of June 1857 that, following a declaration that her statement was true, Anne was solemnly admonished of her sin and expected to lead a virtuous life, and was restored to the privileges of the church. Jemima died in 1931, and her father's name is not included in her death entry, suggesting that Peter did not take responsibility for his child, or that they never formed a relationship during her lifetime. It is always worthwhile searching the corresponding records for the parish where you know a family lived. You might be surprised what you find. Further information about Kirk Sessions and the records they produced can be found in the Kirk Sessions Record Guide. Although Kirk Session minutes are a form of court record, the amount of legal terminology is small and the handwriting is relatively easy to read by most researchers back to the late 18th century. Prior to that, as with other early modern records, the handwriting can be challenging, but once you've undertaken a small amount of paleography tuition, Kirk Session records are among the easier types of early modern records to use. If you are new to research using original records prior to the late 18th century, you can find help in our guide on reading older handwriting, the Scottish Handwriting website, and a glossary of abbreviations, words and phrases. The records of Kirk Sessions and of Higher Church Courts are the first in a series of digitised record sets NRS will make available via Scotland's people throughout 2021 and beyond. You can find out more about family and historical research at the Scotland's People website and you can keep up to date with news and events by following Scotland's People on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for listening to this talk. We hope you have found it useful for your research. If you have any questions, please get in touch with us at www.scotlandspeople.gov.uk forward slash contact hyphen us.